Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This training packet, which is one of the most widely used products in Abacus, is called U-Mesh Motion Subroutine. This training package includes these topics. When do you need to use the U-Mesh Motion subroutine? What are the uses of the subroutine? When can it be used? And when should the subroutine be? The second one is how to use U-Mesh Motion subroutine. Where is the subroutine block? What are the variables of subroutine? Which variable is required? And which is optional? And the third one, what is the get VRM and get part info subroutine? These subroutines are two utilities subroutines which can help us to write UMesh motion subroutine. What are the uses of these subroutines? Where is the subroutine block? And what are the variables of subroutine? And the other one is what is get node to elecom subroutine? What are the uses of this subroutine? Where is subroutine block? And what are the variables of subroutine? What is get vrm av g at node subroutine? The cases under review are the same as the previous subroutine. And the last part of this package is related to how to use in examples step by step. What is the setting in Abacus CAE? How use the main and utility subroutines in problem? And what is the flowchart of this subroutine? This training package has a prerequisite for reviewing subroutine. Also, its advanced package can be used after using this package. This package included a step-by-step -step training video, which has more than 60 minutes duration. It has all theories, tips, and simulation steps. In addition, you can find practical examples which help you to learn how to write U-Mesh Motion Subroutine. It should be mentioned it included all software files, subroutines, and etc. You can find this package including some details about it in this link. Furthermore, you can find us in these social media. Firstly, in this section, you should pay attention what are the uses of this subroutine. This subroutine is one of the most widely used subroutine in many problems including high deformation problems. One of the particular usage of this subroutine is for gear simulation. And the second one is when can it be used. This subroutine allows you to restrict the movement of the mesh while using the LAE technique. For example, you can see example about LAE simulation in comparison to Lagrangian simulation. You can see in this simulation that the distortion of these elements in ALE simulation is less than Lagrangian simulation and it's very helpful for some problem with large deformation. And when should the subroutine be? This subroutine can be used with a standard solver. It should be noted that this subroutine is called at the end of any incrementation that has ALE. And in many cases it is necessary to use other subroutines such as get vrm get part info get note to lm con and get vrm avg at node and get part info this subroutine is used to access the desired part information 
The input of this subroutine includes the following. INTNUM is the internal or global node or element number to be local. JTYP is an integer flag indicating whether INTNUM is a node or element number. Set JTYP as 0 to look up a node number and set JTYP to 1 to look up an element number. Well, let's check variables returned from the utility routine or outputs. CPN name is the name of the part instance that contain INT num, an empty part instance indicating that the node or the element is at the necessary level and is not including in any part instance. Lock num is the part local node or element number corresponding to INT num. It is completely clear that it depends on the INT num it is node or it is the element. And JRCD, like as the previous subroutine, is return code. It is, if it is zero, it shows that you don't have any error. And if it is one, you have error in your subroutine. Workshop one, writing UMesh motion subroutine on forming process. In this example, the modeling of forming process is investigated. The mechanical and geometrical specifications of the punch and sheet are given below. Boundary condition should be considered in two steps. The first step, punch has only 2 mm displacement in opposite y direction. In the second step, displacements of the punch changes to 5 mm in opposite of y direction. All things that I want to explain in this subroutine is in accordance with the following. The first step, the specific constraint on ALE technique is defined for a number of slave and master nodes. The next step for a specific node in subroutine, we do the following in the ALE domain. For each node within the region, a list of connected elements is obtained. In the next step, the following subroutine is written and described based on the flowchart. Like other subroutines in this subroutine, its interface must be copied and in the middle of it, the original text of the code must be placed. So, as I mentioned before, I should find the UMesh motion subroutine in documentation and at this point the interface is copied. Then the empty Fortran file in Visual Studio is opened. These differences are created based on the formula to calculate U local in UMesh motion subroutine. In the second workshop, we implement this subroutine in another model. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching.
I hope you have received the items that you're looking for in this package. Follow us on our social page and website. Have a nice day. Hope to see you again.